Hello Biology 400 students, this is Mr. Gales and today I'm going to bring you the Chemistry of Water screencast session number one. We're going to kind of leave behind our look at atoms, elements in the periodic table and begin applying what you learned in the first part of our basic chemistry unit by looking at the unique properties of water which derive from really the structure of the water molecule and hydrogen bonds that we find between molecules. That'll be the focus of this first screencast and hopefully by the end of this first screencast you'll have a better idea of what causes what you see here on this picture. You've probably seen this before where you have water droplets that are sort of pooled up on the surface of, uh, could be a leaf like you see in this picture, or even on, on the surface of a, a car in the early morning. The hope is that after you've seen about the structure of water and been introduced to a hydrogen bond that you'd be able to explain what causes this. So keep that kind of in the back of your mind. Why do water droplets form the way that they do? So let's get right into looking at the structure of water and then we'll follow up with looking at something called a hydrogen bond. All right, so we're gonna begin by looking at this water molecule over here. We have uh, two hydrogen atoms. Remember, we know the chemical formula of water is H2O. So we have two hydrogen atoms that are each joined to uh, this oxygen atom by a single polar covalent bond. You should remember from the electronegativity screencast that whenever we have an oxygen atom that's gonna bond with either carbon or hydrogen, oxygen has a, a greater electronegativity value, not so much that it's going to completely pull the electrons away, but enough that it's going to pull the electrons closer to itself. So they are, the electrons are essentially being shared unequally, right? And that's what makes this a polar covalent bond. If we could visualize this, these, these two shared electrons will spend more time around the oxygen atom's nucleus than they will around the hydrogen atom's nucleus. That's what makes it polar. And so we have these two hydrogen atoms, each having polar covalent bonds with the oxygen atom. Um, the, when we have polar bonds present, polar covalent bonds present within a molecule, we say that that makes the entire molecule itself polar. Now this is a very important picture. Um, I would recommend that you draw this into your notes. What this represents here is the result of those polar covalent bonds. This is what a polar molecule looks like, and this is gonna play a very important role in much of what we do for the remainder of the first semester. So let's take a moment and draw that. Now, what we have here, remember the oxygen atom is going to be a little bit more electronegative than the hydrogen, so it's gonna pull the electrons closer to itself. What that means, if you think about an electron is negatively charged, so if there are more electrons that are gonna spend more time around oxygen, that's going to give that end of the molecule a slightly negative charge. On the other side of the molecule, where there are the hydrogen atoms, the electrons spend a little bit less time. They're still being shared, but it's an unequal sharing. And so the hydrogen end of the water molecule receives a slightly positive charge. Polar, think North Pole, South Pole, opposites, right? So we have a slightly negative charge on the oxygen end and a slightly positive charge on the hydrogen end. This is a, a critical concept. This is really important in understanding not only the structure of water, but also its interactions with other materials that we'll learn about in subsequent screencasts. Now, I'm gonna show you a, a brief video that will explain in a little bit more detail the structure of water, and it's gonna introduce to you the idea of the hydrogen bond, which was also gonna be an important concept as we move forward in biology. So let's take a look at that video now. Water's physical properties, tough yet fluid, make it the backbone of everything from tiny cells to the world's weather systems. It's a small, simple molecule that covers 70% of the planet. It's a liquid that carves out the planet's surface and an electrically lopsided chemical that makes all life possible. And over time, it cuts like a knife. But what makes it so tough? As in much of life, the key to success is sticking together. Water's countless molecules flow as if one, and that flow has everything to do with water's electrochemical makeup. Water is something called a dipole. A dipole simply means that it's a material that has one kind of charge on one end and another kind of charge, the opposite one, on the other end. So it's got a slightly negative part over near the big fat oxygen atom, and near the hydrogen atoms, it's a slightly positive part. So this enables water to do something pretty spectacular. When it's in combination with other water molecules, the hydrogen parts get attracted to the oxygen part 
of its nearest neighbor. And so the molecules kind of squeeze together. This attraction, known as the hydrogen bond, is at the core of water's amazing properties. All right, in the video that you just watched, obviously we reviewed the idea that water itself is a polar molecule with a slightly negative end near the oxygen atoms and a slightly positive end near the hydrogen atoms. You were also introduced to the hydrogen bond. Now, a hydrogen bond is a weak attraction. It's not as strong as an ionic or a covalent bond, but it's a very important type of bond in biological compounds and substances. Essentially, the way a hydrogen bond works is it's the weak attraction between the hydrogen atom of one molecule and a slightly negative atom within another molecule. Now, a key idea here, and this I can't overstate this enough, a lot of times what students will mistake is that the hydrogen bond is between the oxygen and the hydrogen here within the molecule, and that's not correct. If you look at the picture here on the right, this is a more accurate representation. A hydrogen bond is, be is a, the attraction between the slightly positive hydrogen on one molecule, so we see it right here, and then the slightly negative atom within another molecule, and that would be over here, so this oxygen. Okay. Now what will happen with water molecules is each water molecule is going to form up to three additional hydrogen bonds, and as you can see here, that's going to um, produce sort of a, a cluster of water molecules, each with these weak attractions holding them together. Okay. Now, what we want to take a look at next here is an, uh, an animation that will show you how the hydrogen bond works. Uh, and again, this is a very important concept as we move forward through our, our water chemistry portion of the basic chemistry unit and then into organic chemistry and cell biology. So really for the remainder of this semester, this is an important concept to build on. So let's make sure you pay attention to this. Let's look at the animation and then we'll wrap it all up. All right, so in that animation, what you saw was how uh, the water molecule itself, the structure of the water molecule, makes hydrogen bonding possible. We get the interaction between the slightly positive hydrogen atom on one molecule and a slightly negative atom within another molecule. In this case, when we talk about water, obviously that slightly negative atom is the oxygen atom. All right, so a brief screencast here, but the structure of water and the hydrogen bonds that form as a result of it play a hugely important role in what we're going to learn next. So please make sure you've taken really good notes. I would even recommend that you go back and watch this screencast one more time. Uh, and then when we come back into class together, we'll go through some practice. We're going to use some of these models here. You'll get a chance to work with these little models of water molecules. And you'll actually be able to see how hydrogen bonds form between them. They're kind of fun to play with. And then as we are playing around with these models, we're going to learn about some of the properties of water that make life possible. So until we see you in class, this has been Mr. Gales, see you in biology.